Hey there, Chuck with RoadDeckBuilder.com. We are here with game two of our draft here. And this seems like an alright hand to keep. We do have Asphyxiate on board and Scholar of Atrios. So, no, we won't mulligan. He's playing first, so we're going to get first draw anyways. If this guy has a turn one thought, sees, I swear. It's just going to be crazy. So we do draw into our fourth swamp here, or third swamp, but fourth land, which seems decent because now we have Heliod's Emissary on board here. He has a Baleful Eidolon, which is a Death Touch here. We do have Claim of Erebos there. So we can tap something to deal 2 damage. And we have another one there. So here we'll go ahead and throw out Scholar. He's going to declare attackers again. That's fine. We will take one. I'm okay with that. He doesn't have anything? That's crazy. Another land. So we're getting kind of land flooded here at this point. And do I want to just go ahead and cast a 3-3? Three, three, or... Do I just cast a claim here and deal 2 damage to him and tap out? Or do I drain 1, gain 1, and just kind of negate his damage here? Get in there for 2. see what he's got going on here. I feel like he might be missing a second color here, but Grey Merchant's going to get him back three and drain me three. That seems pretty decent. He'll get in there with his Baleful Eidolon, which is fine. We have a Forlorn Sudama here, which has Intimidate, which does no good. So I'm one away from using Sip here. I'm not really worried about the damage aspect here. But I am one away from needing to... So I think we do just limit him here. We'll go ahead and cast Claim onto this thing here. and then drain one, pick up one here. So I'm back up to 16. We can block that gray merchant all day long. The only thing that's bothering us is this Baleful Eidolon, which we'll have an answer for next turn if we want it. So he's going to lose one, I'm going to lose one here. And that sucker has flying. He's just going to attack with that, which is fine. As he's looking at doing a grindy thing too here. Servant of Timer, it seems really nice. As we can actually asphyxiate this turn. That Blood Toll Harpy, which has the flying. And we'll cast the Servant here. <laughs> I 
No need to attack. Sylvan Caryad is really nice. So we'll take another one here, that's fine. And we get another swamp. So, do we sip his Baleful Eidolon, or do we even care at this point? Hmm. Questions, questions, questions. So we get to do this and deal two damage to him. Get rid of that guy. Unless he has a regeneration ability here somewhere. Not sure what he's waiting on here, but we shall see. <laughs> Go ahead and swing in with Servant here. He will block it. That's fine. as we want it to be untapped so and he is going to get back that baleful eidolon which is quite annoying so at this point we're just gonna have to play the drain game he has a sword wise centaur which is pretty awful for us So he's down to a 16, I'm up to him here. We'll draw a card, hopefully it's a land. Another Scholar's fine, actually. I'm actually perfectly fine with that. That actually helps out quite a bit here. And at this point, we will just drain one. And we can't attack with Servant this turn, as that it would be very bad for us. We could attack with Scholar, but he's just going to block with Swordwise Centaur, so we won't do that. Grave Robber Spider has Reach and is a 2-4. This has all kinds of stuff to play around with here. And holy crap, that's going to gain him a ton of life. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yikes. So he has just of a grindy deck as we do. This is going to give all my dudes death touch though, which is kind of nice. But I don't think we're going to attack here. We want to play the defensive game because we want to play. We want to choose what he loses here. We don't want him to dictate what he loses.
He's got some kind of a pump here. He has to. And my biggest loss here is my servant. So we will go ahead and just block here. He can regen it all he wants to. That's fine. So he's just going to plus it to take out the servant. That's fine. That's how you want to play the game. That's perfectly fine with me. There is another planes. That's going to work out really well. I think we will go ahead and unfortunately chuck out the Heliod's Emissary this time to bestow it on this guy, making him a 4-7 Death Toucher. Which again, I think we'll play defensively here. as he can double block stuff if we attack, but we can just pick and choose what we want to take out of his if he attacks. When Shrike Harpy enters the battlefield, if tribute wasn't paid, target opponent sacrifices a creature. So either he's either going to get a 4-4 flyer here, or I have to sack something. So yeah, we'll put two counters on it. That's fine with me. <laughs> and Ghostblade on all on his double striker. For six. Ooh, man, that's rough. So we could be doing 8 to him a turn. And every time this guy attacks, we can tap a target creature and opponent controls. So I think we do this. Now, if only we could give that sucker lifelink, we would be good business here. But unfortunately, he has too many blockers here, so we're only going to be dealing 5 damage. We can tap down his Shrike Harpy, but it's going to be coming back up next turn. And then he can do 3, 6, 7, 8, right there to me. 10. But it would also take out his entire field. So we'll just have to see how he blocks here. We're going to have to go for this. So we are going to tap out his Shrike Harpy here. And see how he wants to come up with a block here. So he's going to throw his Grey Merchant in front of it. And he's going to probably just swing in with Shrike Harpy here. His Disciple of Phoenix does not really bother me. So I'm sure he'll just swing with this Shrike Harpy here. 
but even that still puts me on a pretty fast time clock here unless I can draw into this lash. If I can draw into lash of the whip here, we're going to be in really good shape. On his end step here, I'm actually going to tap this and deal two damage to him. Oh man. And he gains three life. Ugh. Gross. Swamp is okay. I don't think he even has enough on board here to take me out, so he's just going to have to throw something in front of this. So we'll tap this guy. Why not? So he'll throw his disciple in front of it. That's fine. So that puts me up to a 14 here. But I'm a creature. He puts the Baleful Eidolon on his. He's going to deal 8 to me this turn. And I can't kill that this turn, unfortunately. And he's got a lot of time on his hands here. So he's going to deal 8 to me this turn, which sucks, but it is what it is. So Lash is going to be perfect here as it takes out his flyer. And this turn, I think I'm just going to play it safe here and just do a drain. And see if he'll swing into me with his death toucher as I have the double strike. He's going to read the bones, losing him two life. So we'll see if he swings here. Because the double strike is going to be pretty problematic for him. Ugh, that's gross. So that makes him a 6-6 six, six death toucher. So he would actually get through to my double striker. But is that okay? I think we will go ahead and just block it here, unfortunately.
which may be okay for me here. And we get River Trawler here, so I don't know if this is going to do anything for us, but we will see. So we get Archetype back, so all of our stuff is going to get Death Touch. So that puts us in a, quite a bit of a better spot, as his dude doesn't have Death Touch now, and we do have Death Touch. So, that puts us in a really good spot here. And we are just going to sit back here, and we need to run him out of some time here, because we are not doing well on time. And he could beat us just by time. And even a land here at this point is fine, but Asphodel Wanderer is going to be perfect. And he can gang up on pretty much anything that we throw at him here. But it's going to do Death Touch, so I feel like just attacking here. We'll tap down a wolf, why not? If he wants to block, that's fine by me. So he will block with both, and both will die. So that's fine. That puts him on the short end of the stick here. As I can sack this and return an enchantment card, creature card from my graveyard to my hand, and that doesn't give that death touch, so that's a 3 3 without death touch. At the end of his turn, we are going to go ahead and dump some mana into Scholar here. And we have another Scholar on board here, which doesn't really do much but act as a blocker at this point, but still. We can swing in with a couple of guys here. <laughs> what is this, a democratic convention? So he's going to block. That's fine. The Leaf Crown Dryad falls off. So it takes care of that guy. Get in there for a couple here. Let's see what he's got on his turn. He's going to gain some life here. Gain four life. And we're going to take it back from him more than likely. And 
and Disciple, but that does nothing because I don't have any cards in hand. And here on out, we pretty much just drain every turn. We can attack with the Asphodel Wanderer because we can regen it, and it's just going to kill whatever it touches. So he won't block it, which is fine. And then we'll just dump mana into Scholar here. And we'll have him lose two life here. And we'll see what happens here. trying to run down his clock a little bit here but these both decks are so grindy here he's got a death touching said scorpion which doesn't have death touch he's got nothing going there night owler is pretty much gonna finish me off here as we are going to cast this with Bestow on our Asphodel Wanderer. And swing for the hills. So we won that one by the skin of our teeth. And I do think we bring in this other Asphodel Wanderer here. And we will get rid of, uh, uh, let's see, what do we get rid of here? Maybe a Tormented Hero. Maybe that's not so important in this match, but maybe it is because it's a heroic target. Uh, Forlorn Sudama is not all that terrific in this matchup. And even March of the Return might have a place as a one of here, just enabling us to get back some of our stuff here. And maybe we'll ditch one Scholar here. But Scholar's so good that I don't want to do that. Maybe we just get rid of Claim. Yeah, I think we can get rid of Claim safely. And we'll submit this. See what we can do here. And this is fine. I'm actually okay with this as we have the Asphodel Wanderer first turn. No, we won't mulligan. So hopefully we draw into some land pretty quick here. Scholars on board as long as we draw a land here. And he doesn't have a turn two play either, but well, neither do we, so but he doesn't know that. We have our other mana source here now. So we have both Regeneration and Athreos on the... He's got a Servant, which is pretty annoying. But we can stop that guy all day long, but it doesn't really matter. So we'll throw out Scholar this turn. Don't worry about the regen too much. 
This is going to be kind of like a mirror match here until we can cast our Lash. And we do have Odonis River Trawler on board, but I don't really want to cast that right now. And it doesn't really do anything. I suppose we can do our Nyxborn Idol on here, and we'll just cast it normal. As that does give us the ability to kill his Servant of Timoret if he does attack with it. So it'll serve its purpose. And effectively, we trade off a really deadly card for... Come on. Why would you do that? So that's a 3-5 now. So 1-2. We still can only do 4 to it. That's annoying. So he's definitely going to swing with that this turn. And I don't think we even block it. I mean, maybe we do, because he's only going to be able to do three to us. So we block it. That's fine. Only does one back. And that's better than taking three, so... That's pretty solid. We do get our other planes here, so hopefully he swings in next turn, as we can lash that thing back. Uh, we don't cast anything here, I don't think. Although Sentry's tempting here. As it gives us three in the air. I think we will go ahead and do that. And then the next turn we can Odonos River Trawler, if nothing else. So we can double block with Nyxborn and Sentry here. And he can take out one or the other. But he'll pick Sentry, which means we'll get to keep Nyxborn. So maybe that's not even the right play here. Maybe we should have just blocked and lashed. I think that would have been the better play, but who knows. We'll see. If nothing else, we're going to be doing three damage to him every turn. And he's only going to be doing one to us, which is fine. And if he attacks with these wolves, too, I'll trade off with the next one I want because then I have a Dundas Rival Trawler the next turn. Which will bring back my next one I want and actually cast it for Bestow instead. So, yeah, I think we're fine here. So I'm going to lose one, he's going to gain one, blah blah blah. Yeah, we get that. So what do you got here? Another Raised by Wolves? Are you kidding me right now? Ugh. A nine? So yeah, we're definitely throwing Nyxborn in front of that this turn. It's a nine ten. Just ridiculous. Definitely can't oh, those type of shenanigans go on here. So we need the five for lash, but can we even do enough to that thing? So we have three, four, five on board, and he has ten. So that's not even enough to really even slow it down. Sip's fine, but we don't have any way to cast it right now. And he has all these wolves too. Yikes. So I guess we do just river trawler here and wait until we cast a mana. Have the mana to cast something here. 
And we do get the uh, Nyxborn back. And maybe we just cast it. I think we do. I think we just cast it. I don't think we care. So we just need a blocker for the servant right now. And we can't get in here with the sentry for three because we do have the flying and it has vigilance, so that's going to help us out a little bit here. And we do have the servant's trigger here. Going to get us down to an 18. Unfortunately, we don't have the mana for sip now. Or we could just blast the crap out of these things and just sip that thing off. And holy crap. So now it's a death toucher. 10 10. Fine, whatever. We're just going to throw. Nextborn Eidolon back in front of this again. I can't get it back. So he's saving these guys here pretty well. Said Scorpion with Death Touch. That's fine. We get our planes so we can sip off this thing, which is exactly what we are going to do. Because it is being destructive and killing all my dudes, and I don't like it. So we are just going to sip off your servant here. You'll get this stuff back, but I'm fine with that. You can go ahead and do this. Get in there for a little bit here. And pass turn back. We've got five minutes here to end this thing. So he's got to start making some pretty bold moves. I've got regen on Asphodel Wanderer, but I'm not really too worried about that. He's going to gain 3 life here. Take him back up to 16. He will attack with his Death Touchers. And some Wolves. And I'm okay with blocking one Wolf here. Scholar can block a wolf. Asphodel Wanderer is going to trade with his Baleful Eidolon. And I'm even okay with Odonos River Trawler trading with the wolf here. That's actually fine with me. So. Seems pretty alright here. Feel like I'm in a pretty decent spot. I've got God's Willing here. We will go ahead and lash his most dangerous target here. Not really worried about his one drop death touch here. Sentry will swing with. Should have left the God's Willing up, but that's fine. So he's just going to swing with the said scorpion deal one to me. That's fine. I'm okay with that. As this turn, we're really going to start putting on the brakes here. Throw another scholar out here. We'll get in here with sentry. For three. And we'll go ahead and activate Scholar here. I will take the one this turn, and he said he thinks he's insulted me, so he hasn't. It's fine. I I wonder what he's got here. 
Gray Merchant's fine. He's going to gain back two. And I feel like we darn near have this in the bag here. I don't want to get too greedy though. Greediness cost us our last game. So we're going to be pretty careful here how we do this. But as long we have 4 minutes and 17 seconds. Our last two turns have taken us like 20 seconds apiece. I like that. He's just playing around. He's just being fun, so. <laughs> so we'll see what we come up with here. We have a plane, so that leaves us in hand with God willing. So we can safely go ahead and activate Scholar here. He's got one card in hand, so we could, we I don't know. This could end up really weird here. We have three minutes and forty-five seconds to win this game, or we are sunk. We're gonna go ahead and go into combat here. Attack in with Sentry. Get him down to a six. And we will have this next turn unless something crazy happens here. We have the gods willing in hand for any shenanigans, so. And he's got another Nylea's Disciple, which gains him back another three, so that doesn't make this turn a, a win. So he's got his Death Toucher attacking me. I'm going to take the one. Playing it kind of safe here. See if we can get something that's going to give us a blowout here. Anything? Nothing? Maybe? Come on. Please. Something, maybe a bestow creature, anything here. The death touch thing doesn't do me any good. Oh, there it is. That might be enough to do this. That is enough to do it. Boom. Night Owler. That does it. That freaking does it. Uh, he said, my choice to be the presidential GOP nomination. I would say... Shoot, that's a hard choice. Uh... Oh, what's his name? Uh, not Paul Ryan. Uh, what is his name? Ah, uh, golly. I can't think of it right now.
What is his name? I can't think of it right now. Oh, man. <gasps> I just totally screwed that up. No! I cannot remember that guy's name to save my life. Rand Paul. There it is. I finally remembered his name. That guy floats my bubbles. He, uh, talking politics. Sorry, guys. If you're not into politics, I really apologize, but this guy is. And I'm playing Magic and Talking Politics, which are two of my favorite subjects. So I'm really sorry if you're not into politics, and especially if you're not a Republican. Nothing against Democrats, but I just affiliate myself more with the Republican Party. So... So yeah, sorry about that. Uh, Yo, but no, I'm friends with plenty of Democrats, don't worry. Uh, but I am definitely more affiliated with the Republican Party. As most people know, I do have four children, been married for eight years, crazy stuff, 20 years old for those of you that are. So here we're just going to go ahead and end this game so I don't lose it by being stupid and not acting like I did last time so he can let time run out and talk if he wants but he's not gonna declare any attackers so this game is over Say nice deck and good games. Thanks for the convo. So we are going to go ahead and stop recording here. Thanks for watching. We'll see you guys in game three.